I used a pretty pastel purple yarn, baby soft yarn for the bow and one of the dog collars. I used I love this yarn hot rose color for the flower. The next thing we're going to do is take both of the front front legs and we're going to sew them on to the front of your dog. So you want to line them up. Make sure that when you line them up that they're even on the front of your dog and that your dog can still stand and that the paws will touch the ground when your dog is standing. Then once you're happy with the placement of the front leg you just take your tapestry needle on the long end that you left for sewing or get the same colored yarn and then you're just going to go right along the top only and just sew it to the body. I'm just going to go in and out and just sew the leg to the front of the body. And you can see how mine is about two rows down from the neck and I made sure it's centered on the front of the dog. Then after you've sewn the front paws onto the front of the body. You can take and tie a knot with the remaining loose yarn end and then just take the loose yarn end and bury it into the front paw. Now I'm going to show you how to put the hind legs on. Now I'm going to show you the easiest way that I found to sew the hind legs on. Just take your tapestry needle and even though I have the black yarn on one of the hind legs. I'm, I've decided to just use my white yarn, but if you'd rather use the black yarn, you could do that as well. And then you just take the yarn on your tapestry needle, and then you're going to take your hind leg, make sure that you have the paw facing forward, and you're going to take your tapestry needle, and you're just going to go right through about here is the center where we closed. It's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows down, about the center of the ball of the hind leg. Just go in with your tapestry needle and about equally on the other side, you're going to come out on the opposite side about the same same distance from the center on the back. And then just pull the yarn through and make sure you leave plenty of yarn for tying a knot on the other side. Then you're going to take and place the hind leg onto the body making sure to line up the bottom of the hind leg with the bottom of the body and that the front paw of the hind leg is facing up and then once you have it positioned then you're going to look and see where the yarn comes onto the body and then hold that area with your finger and then you're just going to take your tapestry needle and just go right through the body at that point you're going to go through the same distance on the opposite side from the center or the bottom of the body. So you want to go in and out equally on the other side. 
and you don't have to pull the hind leg onto the body. Leave some yarn, a gap with the yarn. Then you're going to take the other hind leg and you're going to go in. Make sure that you line it up on the body so that the hind leg, the paw faces up and then you're just going to go right through the center just like you did on the previous hind leg and you're going to go right through the same come out the same area as you went in but on the opposite side and just pull the yarn through and again you're going to leave a gap between the hind leg and the body then you're going to take your tapestry needle and you're going to go about a stitch over So I'm going about a stitch over and I'm going to come out on the other side. Make sure that you don't come out in the same place as your other yarn because you're going to pull the yarn and you don't want them to get tangled. So then you just pull it through. You can see how I don't have any yarn left on that side. I pulled it through and then you're going to go through the body and I'm going to go right above about a row up and a about a row, just one row up, and I'm going to come out on the other side of the body. And again, I'm about a row up from where I came out. And you can see how I'm leaving the yarn, a little gap between the hind leg and the body. Then you're going to take and go in about a stitch over. I'm just going to go about close to where I came out before and then come out through the other side. And you can go through twice if you want, but since we're going to sew the hind legs to the front legs, I'm only going to go through once with the yarn. Now that you've come out on the other side, you can pull the yarn through. And you can see how it pulls the hind legs nicely for the dog. So you're just going to pull as snug as you want the hind legs to the body. And then as soon as you get it how you want, then you just tie a knot. Pull it snugly and then finish tying your knot. Then you can see how the hind legs are now on the body and you can move the hind legs and we're going to position them so that we could sew them to the front. But before we do that, you're just going to take and bury the loose yarn ends. So you just take your tapestry needle and just like we did before with our loose yarn ends, you're just going to take and go right where you tied the knot and then just come out anywhere on the hind leg and just pull that loose yarn end through and then just cut it and you can see that even though I used the white yarn to hold the hind leg onto the body and this hind leg has the black yarn you can't really see it because it makes a little dimple in there Go ahead and bury your other loose yarn end and then when you come back I'll show you how to sew the hind leg to the front legs. Now you're going to position your dog and I'm taking my hair and just putting it on top of the dog's head or getting it out of the way for now. Then you're going to position 
the front legs. Make sure you have your paws facing out. Positioning the hind legs so that the paws are up. And then once you have it positioned how you like the dog, then you're going to take your tapestry needle with the same colored yarn and you're going to sew the hind leg to the front leg with your tapestry needle. Make sure you leave enough loose yarn in for tying a knot and then you're just going to take come out close to where you went in and then tie a knot then you're just going to secure the hind legs to the front paws and you're going to do that on both sides and then bury your loose yarn ends and then come back. I also took the two front legs on the bottom and just put a stitch holding the two front legs together. I have the legs on, sewn on now for the dog and this is what the dog looks like so far. So we still have the tail to do but before we finish the tail I'm just going to show you the hair. So for this dog you can see the type of yarn that I used is the same type of yarn that I used for the main part of the dog. You could also use the fake fur yarn, which I really love. Even a beginner could use this type of yarn. The only thing that the beginner might want to practice is making the ear the same way with the regular yarn first it's made the exact same way and I show in detail how I made it with the fake fur yarn. It looks scarier than it really is but it just gives the dog a really neat look if you can as a beginner can see how I did the exact same stitches but this one has the fake fur. So you can see I just love how it turned out and I absolutely love this color aqua eye is just really beautiful for this project and you can see how the yarn looks it just makes it a really uh, gives it a real look for the dog if you're able to use this yarn plus you're going to make regular crocheters and may be amazed that this is the first project that you made as a beginner because it definitely doesn't look like a beginner project the other thing about this fur is it doesn't come off or shed except when you cut it. So you're going to want to be in an area where you can um, clean up the mess because when you cut it to tie the loops it will cause little hairs to fall on your table or workplace that you'll just have to get rid of. Now I'm going to show you how I groomed the hair on the dog. So you're just going to take all the white portion of the hair and hold it. Make sure all the dark portion of the hair is off to the side. This is just going to be the front triangle, the white triangle for the front of the dog. And you just take your scissors and you just cut down in a triangle. I'm trying to do this on camera. And then you're going to go up to form a triangle on the other side. So here you can see how I formed a little triangle in the front. And no matter which yarn you use, whether it's the fake fur yarn, you'll do the same thing. You'll just hold all of the white portion and then just cut the triangle, making it as long as you want. This is how long I made mine on the fake fur dog. And this is how it looks on this dog. Now, you're going to take 
the black portion of the side of the dog and you're going to make the length of the long portion as long as you want. I'm going to make mine about where I started the triangle on the white portion is where I'm going to start the triangle on the black portion of the hair and I'm going to just going to cut at an angle like this. So I'm just going to take and cut up so that the longer portion is towards the front and then the shorter portion is towards the back and it just goes up at an angle. And then you want to make sure that whatever length that you choose on this side you want to cut the same length on the other side. So you're just going to take, make sure that you measure, get the length right, and then you just cut the same way on the opposite side. Then you have the cute dog. So far it's all groomed. Now you just want the hairs that go, the white hairs that go along the back of the dog. And here I just want to show you, this one's already groomed and this is how I left the length with the fake fur, the black portion. This is how it looks with the white portion in the front and then on the side. And then on the back you can see the white hairs of the fur on the back with the fake fur. Now you're just going to take your tapestry needle and the white yarn or whatever your yarn that you're using for the fur and you're just going to take and go right along the neck. And remember we can always cut it more later I'm just going to leave about this length touching the hind leg and you're just going to go in and out making loops just like you did for the other hair. Make sure that the yarn that you do have doesn't get tangled with your loops and make sure that they're all about the same length. You can always trim it later but this is about how I left mine and then you just go in and out all along the neck and the back of the dog all the way to the other side and then you just cut the loops and tie a knot just like you did for all of the other hair on the dog. If you're using the fake fur you just have to be careful as you're going through the neck that you don't um, get the loops tangled but you'd make that the same way that you do with the regular yarn. This is how mine looks after putting the white hair along the neck of the dog. Now I'm going to show you how to make the tail. For the tail I'm using my H or 5 millimeter crochet hook again and I'm just taking the black yarn. I'm going to start with a magic circle. Just drape the yarn across your four fingers. Use your thumb to stabilize. Wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers and hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then you're going to take your crochet hook, you're going to bring up a loop, then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to put eight single crochet into the magic circle. So eight single crochet into the magic circle, that's two. three, four, six, I'm trying to get that loose yarn in down, seven, and eight. Then just take your forefinger and thumb, hold the base of the eight single crochet. You have those two loops again, 
On the opposite side, you're going to pull on one. If it doesn't close, then let go and pull on the other strand. But this one's closing, so I'm just going to close it gently. Then take that loose yarn end and pull on that. Then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around until you have the size that you want for your tail. So one single crochet in every stitch around. So that means that every round you're going to have eight stitches. And for my dog's tail, I made mine about seven or eight rows is the length of my tail for my dog. So go ahead, finish one single crochet into every stitch until you've completed seven or eight rows or the size that you want for the tail of your dog and then come back. This is what my tail looks like and I completed eight rounds for my tail. Then when you're finished with the size that you want, you're going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just go right into the next stitch with your crochet hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring enough yarn through to finish off and sew the tail onto your dog. Then you're just going to take the tail, place it right where you want it on your dog, make sure you center it, and then you're just going to take and crochet, I mean not crochet, sew the tail on with your tapestry needle. Just go in and out, sewing the tail to the body of the dog, right along the base of the tail. And then you just tie a knot and bury the, the loose yarn in just like you did before. For the collar, you take the yarn color of choice that you want. I'm using a pretty pastel purple to show you. The first thing you're going to do is just fold the yarn over on itself to form a loop. I'm using my H or 5 millimeter crochet hook for the collar. Just put the crochet hook right through the loop and then hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then you're just going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through that loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch the knot close to the crochet hook, not too tight. Then we're going to start chaining. You're going to make a chain of 40. I'm only going to show you the first four. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through the loop for one chain. two, three, four. Go ahead, finish a chain of 40, and then come After back. After you finish your chain of 40, go ahead and hold that last stitch with your middle finger and your thumb. Then you're going to make a chain of three. One, two, three. That's going to count as your first double crochet for the next row. Now you're going to make a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook, which is the stitch that you're holding. Go ahead and yarn over, go into that stitch that you're holding. You're going to bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, two loops remaining, yarn over and then go through two. Now you're going to make one double crochet in every stitch back across. Go ahead and yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, and then make your double crochet. And I'm just going to do a couple more with you.
Now go ahead, finish making one double crochet in every stitch all the way across and then come back. I just finished my last double crochet in the last stitch and this is what my work looks like. Then you can take and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the two ends together. You may want to get an engravable ID tag with the name of your dog on it that you can attach to your dog collar. Now you're going to take your dog collar and just place it around the neck of your dog. You can decide how you want, which side you want facing out. This is how I have mine facing. Just make sure it's not twisted. Then just take your tapestry needle and put it onto the long end that you left for sewing and then just take and connect the two top parts of the collar and again you want to make sure it doesn't twist so just make sure that your collar is not twisted then once you're sure that it's not twisted, then you can take and sew the two ends together. All the way down until you've connected the bottom stitch. Then you can tie a knot. After you tie a knot, then you can take the name tag and just take the two long ends that you have and tie a knot around your name tag. Then you can take the ends, put it onto your tapestry needle, then just weave it back into the collar. Make sure you go a couple of different directions. That way you don't have loose yarn ends sticking out. And then once you're happy with the loose yarn end being buried, then you can go ahead and cut the loose yarn end. Go ahead and bury all of your loose yarn ends and then come back. Then you can move the collar around to the front. Even though the hair will be down over it, you can still see that there's a collar with the special name for your dog that you made. Now I'm going to show you how to make the matching bow. Take whatever color that you want for your bow Take the yarn, fold it over on itself, and I'm using my H or 5 millimeter crochet hook. Hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. I'm going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to make a chain of four. Then you're going to take your crochet hook, go into that first stitch that you made. Sorry, I'm out of frame. Go into the first stitch that you made. Then you're going to take yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both loops for a slip stitch. And then you just joined your chain four into a circle. And we're going to work into the center of that circle. The first thing you're going to do is just chain four.
That's going to count as your first treble crochet. Now you're going to make five treble crochets into the center of the circle. So you're going to yarn over twice, go into the center of the circle, bring up a loop, you have four loops on your hook. Yarn over and go through two. Three loops on the hook. Yarn over and go through two. Two loops on the hook. Yarn over and go through two. And then you completed one treble crochet. Our first chain four counts as a treble, so now we have two treble crochets. We're going to make four more. I'm going to make one more with you and then I'll let you finish the rest on your own. Go ahead. So far I have four. So I need two more to complete six. Go ahead and finish yours and then come back. This is what my work looks like so far. I've completed one, two, three, four, five, six treble crochet. Now I'm going to make a chain of four. One. So I made a chain of four. Now we're going to make a slip stitch into the center of the circle. Go into the center of the circle, yarn over, and bring the yarn through both loops. And you finished one side of the bow. Now you're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. Then you're going to make five treble crochet into the center of the circle. I'll do the first one with you. Go ahead, finish four more treble crochet into the center of the circle and then You should come see back. your bow starting to take shape. Now after you finished your treble crochets, you're going to chain four. Then you're going to slip stitch into the center of the circle. So you just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you're going to go ahead and finish off. So you just yarn over and pull a lot of yarn through so we can finish the bow. Now you're going to take and you're going to wrap that long piece of yarn end around the center of the bow and as you wrap it you're going to be shaping your bow as you go. Then after you've wrapped it around several times, this is how mine looks, go ahead and turn it over and then you're going to tie a knot on the back with that loose yarn end that you had. Then you can take your bow and place it onto the dog's head where you want it. And I placed it right in front of my ear, dog's ear. And then you're just going to take and sew along the center. Don't sew the bow flaps down. So you just take and sew right along the sides of the center of the bow on both sides. This is sides. how my bow looks after I've sewed it in place. If you like the painted toenails, 
You can take whatever color yarn, and I just matched mine with the bow and the collar. Just take the yarn, put it onto your tapestry needle, and then you're going to take the paw, and we're going to start on the side of the paw. We're going to make one toenail here, one in the center, and then one towards the middle. So you're going to, the first thing you're going to do is go in along that bottom row here of the foot. You're going to go in with your tapestry needle and you're going to go straight up. And I went one, two, three, four rows up with my tapestry needle. Make sure you leave enough of a loose yarn end for tying a knot. Then you're going to go right back in at the bottom where you went in. And then you're going to go at an angle right in the center of the foot. So I went about one, two, three stitches over to the center of the foot. You can see how I made one painted toenail. Then you're going to go straight down four rows and you're going to go at an angle and again you're going to skip three stitches. Then you have the second painted toenail and then you're going to go straight down four rows and then you're going to come out right where you started. And that's the painted toenails and you do that for each of the paws. Just tie a knot and bury your loose yarn ends. This is what the toenails look like after I'm all done. Now with Wren, I used just regular Red Heart equivalent yarn. And then also I switched where she has one blue eye and one brown eye. And also I made the patch on her head a little bit wider. What I would recommend is I did a single crochet and then um, slip stitched into the snout and single crocheted, making it larger. But I would recommend just making single crochets along the snout and then making rows that way. That way it doesn't look, the stitches won't be going the different directions. I think that would give a better look. If you're just using like a Red Heart equivalent yarn and you want to make the white patch a little larger. And this is how mine looks like. And I'm going to show you how to make the her flower for her head. Now to make the flower, you're just going to take whatever color yarn you want for your flower. You're going to fold it to form a loop. And I'm using my H or 5 millimeter crochet hook. And then hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb. Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through that loop for your slip knot. Then you're going to make a chain of five. Then you're going to take your crochet hook, go into that first chain that you made. We're going to slip stitch the two ends together to form a circle. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both loops for a circle. Then you're going to make a chain of three. Then you're going to make a single crochet into the center of the circle. So bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet. And then you formed a chain three loop. 
We're going to make five of them. So chain three, single crochet into the center of the circle. This is our second chain three loop. You're going to make five. That's three. four, and you can scoot them over too if you need to, chain three, single crochet into the center of the circle, and then our last chain three before we slip stitch to the beginning stitch. Now we're going to slip stitch to the first single crochet that we made. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then you're going to make a single crochet into the first chain three loop. So you go into that first chain three loop, bring up a loop, make your single crochet, then you're going to chain Actually, that's going to count as your first single crochet in that chain three loop. Now we're going to make a half double crochet. So just yarn over, go into that same chain three loop, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through all three for a half double crochet. Then make three double crochet into the same chain three loop. So you yarn over, go into the same chain three loop, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. Now we're going to make two more double crochet in the same chain three loop. Then you're going to make a half double crochet, yarn over, go into the same chain three loop, bring up a loop, Yarn over and go through all three loops for a half double crochet. Then you're going to single crochet and you formed a petal. So now you're going to go into the next chain three loop. So you're going to find the next chain three loop. You're going to single crochet and you're going to repeat the same thing. I'm going to make one more petal with you. I'm going to make a half double crochet into the chain three loop. Now three double crochet into the same chain three loop. half double crochet, then single crochet, and you completed another petal. So you're going to repeat that in every chain three loop all the way back to the beginning and then come this back. This is how mine looks after finishing all of the petals all the way around. Then you're going to slip stitch to that first single crochet that you made, just yarn over and then bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then we're going to start working around the spokes along the inner portion of the flower. So you're going to take and go in and around the first spoke. Just bring up a loop, make a single crochet, then you're going to chain two, one, two, and then you're going to go around the next spoke, make a single crochet, you're going to do that all the way around. Chain two, 
go around the next spoke, chain two, go around the next spoke, make a single crochet, chain two, go around the next spoke, and you're going to do that all the way back to the beginning. Then you're going to slip stitch to that first stitch that you made. And then you formed an inner circle that you can work in. So now you're going to go into that first chain two space that you made. And you're going to make a single crochet. Then you're going to make a half double crochet. Two double crochet. half double crochet, single crochet, then you're going to go into the next chain two space and you're going to start all over. I'm going to make one more petal with you, inner petal with you, half double crochet, two double crochet, half double crochet, and a single crochet. And you're going to repeat that all the way around, completing your inner petals, and then come back. Then you can go ahead and slip stitch to that first stitch that you made. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops. Then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the flower onto the dog. Then you have your beautiful flower. And you can put a button into the center also, I'm going to sew a little heart button into the center of mine. This is how mine looks after having the button sewn into the center. Then I'm just going to take my tapestry needle and you just take and weave the yarn back towards the center. When you sew the flower onto the dog, you're going to be sewing around the spokes of the flower in the center and leaving the petals free. This is how the flower looks after I've sewn it onto the dog.